Welcome to Google Play Policy Bytes. I'm Teresa, a product marketing manager for Android and Google Play. Thanks for joining us today. We will cover new policies, recent updates, and key reminders. Let's start with our new policies about hostile downloaders within the mobile unwanted software space, social apps and features for kids and families, and Android emojis. We're adding a hostile downloaded section to our mobile unwanted software policy to prohibit code that by itself is an unwanted software, but the code can download other mobile unwanted software. If you'd like guidelines for major browsing and file sharing apps that facilitate downloads, please take a look at our policy center. This change will help us build a safer and more trustworthy ecosystem for everyone. And as part of that, we want kids to be able to have a safe online experience. So we're adding new requirements in our family's policy for kids apps that are social apps or have social features. We're requiring these apps to have in-app reminders for safely engaging with others online, adult approval before allowing child users to share personal information with others, and a method for adults to be able to manage these social features on an ongoing basis. As a reminder, we do not allow families apps whose primary purpose is to allow children to chat with strangers. Next, we're launching a new Android emoji policy to give users an inclusive and consistent user experience across the Google platform. When the Unicode for an app is outdated, users often don't see the new emojis as is intended. Instead, they may see small square boxes or an incorrect set of emojis. As you can expect, this can be a frustrating or confusing experience. So we're adding a policy that requires apps running on Android 12 and above to use the latest version of emojis released by Unicode within four months of when it's available. Developers will have different options on how to stay compliant with this policy. You can check out the Policy Center for more about these options and additional resources. For example, we have a set of emoji examples shown here that you can use to test if your app is compliant with the latest Unicode version of emojis. If the emojis from the table don't show up correctly in your app, then you may be running an older version of the listed Unicode. The policy will provide guidance on how you can update to the latest version. We also have developer guidance and resources like the Emoji Compat Support Library to help you keep your app up to date. With the Emoji Compat Support Library, your users won't need to wait for Android OS updates to get the latest emoji. Now, let's talk about our recent policy updates and key reminders. First, we're clarifying that the family's ads and monetization policy requirements apply to all monetization and advertising and apps that target children. You'll see that we added language in the policy to clarify that it covers all monetization options, including cross promotions, sponsorship messages, and in-app purchases. You can take a look at the policy center for examples of common violations to avoid. Next, we're clarifying our subscriptions policy to more explicitly prohibit apps that subject users to deceptive or manipulative purchase experiences, including in-app purchases or subscriptions. This helps protect users from misleading or deceptive subscription plans, and it helps reduce high refund rates for developers. Here are some common violations. The first violation is showing multiple screens in the purchase flow that lead users into inadvertently clicking the final continue button to subscribe. The second violation is leading users to think that the plan is free by making the cost that users will be charged after the trial hard to read. As a reminder, the data safety form in Play Console is now available. We want to provide developers with plenty of time and resources to get prepared. In October, you can go to app content in your Play Console to fill out your information and submit for review feedback. We recommend that you start now because some developers have told us it may take them some time to complete the process. As we shared earlier this year, all developers must include a privacy policy and submit this form, even if your app doesn't collect or share personal and sensitive user data. Next February, users will start to see this feature in your app's Google Play Store listing. If your information isn't approved yet, then it will say no information available. We know that some developers will need more time to assess their apps and coordinate with different teams. So you have until April 2022 before your app must have this section approved. Otherwise, your new app submission or app updates may be rejected. We have plenty of resources to help, 
Check out our Help Center at this link to learn more about the policy requirements, definitions, and examples. The article will link to a developer guide on how to check your app's declared permissions, APIs, and libraries. It will also link to a new Play Academy course to walk you through the process and share examples. And lastly, let's take a look at some key enforcement dates. On the top, you see deadlines from the policy updates we talked about today. We've extended the grace period for changes that may take developers more time to adjust to, such as the kids and families social apps and features, and Android emojis update. On the bottom, you see deadlines from our previous policy updates. One to point out is that by November 1st, all updates to existing apps using Play Billing must use Billing Library version 3 or 4. We hope this helped you better understand our policies. For free courses on all things Google Play policy, visit our Google Play Academy at g.co slash playacademy slash policy. Thank you for continuing to partner with us to make Google Play a trustworthy platform for everyone. Until next time, stay safe and healthy out there.